Hey guys, welcome back to another exciting video. Today I'm here with Balto the Wolf Dog, I guess? Is that your name? Uh, it's the Steam name that I have been stuck with since I created it when I was 12 and all my friends know me by it. Alright, so that's his workshop. So it'll be in the description, but what we're going to be looking at today is some interesting, I guess, physics experiments. Is that, is that the right term? Physics experiments? Yeah, that's probably a good description of what this is. All right, so if you watched Frantic's video the other day, he was playing with a flappy bird. What's it called? A ornithopter? Ornithopter is the term, yeah. Ornithopter. And this is a what? Uh, so you could call this a lot of things. Um, my my description of it in my uh, in my my I, I, in my steams or in my uh, my vehicle saves, I referred to it as a Magnus Force device, which it kind of is. A uh, Magnus Force is when you achieve lift by spinning an object. Uh, it's sort of a Flettner rotor, which is the type of airfoil that you use to employ the Magnus Force. But really, because of the way Stormworks works, it's not truly a Magnus Force. It's it's this is closer to a helicopter. Okay, so it's using just just uh, what you call air surfaces. That's it. Yes, it's just control surfaces rotating. Okay, and we should disclaimer that he said that he hasn't tried this in multiplayer, so it may not work. But we're gonna try anyways. All right, get up here and show me what you do. We got two throttle levers. And I have to remember what they do because I built this quite a while ago. Okay. I'm pretty sure that this is the only one that actually does anything, and the only the other one was there just because I had symmetry on. Whoa. Okay. It's spinning. Yeah, we'll see how this goes. Does it need full physics? I'm on medium, I think. Uh, I don't know. The ornithopters do. Oh. Apparently Horizon. it doesn't. Hey. Okay, now can you control this, or is it just strictly like a upwards thing? Uh, so I have pitch control and I have vertical control. I could build roll control into it. I just haven't because, frankly, I don't think it's actually all that good a propulsion system. So I, I didn't really pro I didn't really pursue it after verifying that it worked. Wow! But this is not using. Oh, I'm falling pivots <laughs> to uh, fly at all, right? It's just a it's just a spinning. Yeah, it's just well, it's the spinning and the deflection. Uh, what do you mean by pivots? Well, because like, there's a pivot hack that they use to make things float. And it's not using that kind of thing. It's just do that using with the pivots. No, no, it's not doing that. Or pivots and wheels, I think. Uh, but yeah, so so it's just using those. That's amazing looking when it's flying. Yeah, um, a decent demonstration of how it works. I can come up with actually. Uh, can I hit R on this? Uh, for whatever reason, I can't seem to take it to the workbench. Oh no, you're not auth. It's a thing. Oh, yeah. I'll respawn it and run it at a really low throttle setting, which will give better idea of how exactly it works. Hey, it works on water, too. Look at that. <laughs> that is the interesting side effect of Fortithopters in this game. Is they will sort of try to swim. All right, so what are you going to show me right now? Uh, I am demonstrating the the uh, the actual method of operation. All right, so right now, one is going to the right, and the other one's rotating to the left. Yes, uh, the reason they counter-rotate is just to cancel torque. If they I, I originally, I actually originally designed this with a single rotor, but the torque was way too high and it was completely unmanageable. So I rebuilt it with counter rotating uh, yep. rotors. Gotcha. Okay, now you're going to show me how it works, and I'm going to be looking at what the air surfaces are going to do something. Yeah. Watch the control surfaces; they will clamshell. I'm basically using them as drag rotors, like you would on a flying wing. Okay. Watching. Watching. So if I give it an up order. It will deploy the control surfaces on the upstroke of their rotation, which I'm doing with a, uh, I'm just doing that with a sign. And I prevent them from opening in reverse on the far side just by clamping them. Wow, okay, that's, that's making it go upwards. Yes, this is making it go upwards, and the reason it makes it go upwards is because Stormworks runs out of tick rate kind of quickly. Uh, surprisingly quickly. Uh, it's sort of a similar phenomenon if you've ever built a helicopter in other games or indeed in Stormworks if you've done it with physics like this where you have to offset the pitch and roll by a certain amount, usually almost 90 degrees because the blade will have moved by the time that the physics engine ever registers that the input existed. So the reason that this is an up order, despite the fact that logically it would produce downforce, is because by the time the game gets to measuring the control surface, it's moved 90 degrees. It's moved 180 degrees, actually. So this is mixed almost exactly in reverse. How long did it take to figure that out? Not very long, because I was aware of the phenomenon in helicopters. Ah, uh, okay. So as soon as I noticed that it wasn't doing what I expected it to do, I tried flipping it around and it worked. 
Interesting. Okay, so this still works. Even when these start going really fast, you're able to keep up with that open and close? Yes, there are outer limits to it. This device is simple enough that it doesn't really run into them. The ornithopters, though, I have artificially limited at a somewhat lower uh, wing stroke rate than they could possibly achieve because very interesting physics things start happening when that number gets too high. The ornithopters will eventually outtick the... Uh... So you know how if you look through... Or if you look at a flashing light, it can appear to make motion reverse? Yes. So the ornithopters will do that with the physics engine. If you get the wing beats moving fast enough, they will move so far out of phase with the tick rate that they will move to the next tick. And that will cause the ornithopters thrust to abruptly reverse, which is absolutely hilarious. Okay, can you make it do that now or are you countering that? Uh, this will not do it. The uh... I, I'm honestly not sure why it doesn't. I think it's just because the radii of the wheels are big enough. But with the ornithopters, I could demonstrate it if you want to bring one of those out. Okay, cool. So this is on the workshop. Uh, I'm going to link below so you can check it out. It's really neat. I mean, it's just... I can't believe you built this. It's just so odd and amazing. All right, let's check out the uh, flappy. Well, I'm going to call it the flappy bird because I'm not trying to say... What's the word again? Orthonic. Orthopter. Yeah. So this is what I am calling the Flappy Bird, and this is amazing. Is this based on Dune, or did you just base it on the, uh, you know, the, the little bird devices by Leonardo da Vinci or whatever? So I just happen to like ornithopters and have been ambiently pursuing them in Stormworks for a long time because they seem like they should be easy. Stormworks has insanely dense air, so logically ornithopters should be really easy. It turns out they aren't. This is actually the fourth one that I've tried building and the first one that has had any measure of success. It was somewhat inspired by Dune, though, specifically because one of my friends had downloaded the, um, I'm sure if you could find it specifically, the, uh, a, an, an ornithopter from the workshop that said, hey, I think you'll like this, and it was, you know, it was cheating. Using, uh, it, actually, the way he was cheating was very interesting, but we won't get into that. I, I quite, it is a terrific ornithopter, but it wasn't a real ornithopter, and it was a replica of the Dune ornithopter. Okay. And it re-inspired me to attempt to build a real one. All right, well, this is pretty amazing. I saw it in Frantic's video, and I was like, oh, well, I got to talk to this guy, because Frantic even said, we have no clue how you would even start building this. So where did where did you start? Um, So I, before Stormworks, Stormworks is my replacement game after Gary's Mod lost its uh, its most of its player base. I, I played Gary's Mod for 10 years. Ah. And we had a, there were several of us that were super into designing aircraft of all types in Gary's Mod. And I was mostly replicating as closely as I could get it, the mechanism that we were using for ornithopters in Gary's Mod, because logically it should work. Okay, so you, you kind of had a starting kind of reference point, I guess, because you already tried Yeah, and, and just an idea of how ornithopters work. It, it, it's, it's, it's a relatively straightforward concept. Basically, you just have a propeller, but instead of rotating the propeller all the way around, you're just moving it back and forth through like a quarter turn. All right, so I see the flywheels. Are those doing something or are they just for looks? They are counterweights. Uh, that was something that I hit on after um, I spent a while just trying to trying to, trying to to get this more stable than usual. There were a couple of other ornithopters on the workshop, but they were all huge and they all had horrible, horrible shaking problems. Not that I wasn't impressed. I, I the credit where credit is due. They got that. They they got ornithopters built long before I managed to build one. But when I went to build one, I wanted to see if I could get the shaking as far out as I possibly could to actually make it kind of pleasant to fly. And the idea that I hit on was throwing counterweights on the opposite ends of the wing. It's somewhat misleading when you look at them here. What's going on? The the um, the weights are actually attached to the wing that is opposite them. If I run the throttle really slowly, I you can see. watch how they relate to the wing root on the other side. And the intent of that is to offset the mass of the wing moving up and down on either side. So while the wing is moving down, the weights are moving up, etc. And that evens out as much of the mass. You know, every, every action has an equal and opposite reaction, etc. It, it it equals out that to the best extent that it possibly can. It's not perfect because the wings have drag and the weights don't, but it's relatively close. Okay, and I see that the wings actually do pivot. I haven't played with this yet. This is the first time I'm looking at it or seeing it work in person. So the wings do 
pivot as they go up and down as well. And then you've got the yeah, weights. The, uh, yeah. And the roll order is mixed into them. If I give it a right roll order, you can watch the left wing tilt up a little bit further. Oh, okay. And do these... I haven't seen it happen with the uh, the other device. Do, do these things spread or open up, clamshell open? Uh, these do not clamshell. Oh, they don't. I, they... Could, des I could adapt them to clamshell, but it's not really necessary. It has plenty of yaw authority. Amazing! This is amazing. And how long does this take to build in Stormworks? I know you already had a reference point, but was it still difficult? or? So like I was saying, Ornithopters are surprisingly difficult in Stormworks. It seems like they should be really easy, but the downside of the super dense air is the drag is also really high. So you run into a problem really quickly where Ornithopters actually have crazy high static thrust. Uh, and static thrust is the amount of thrust that a, a propeller or control server, so, some, any mechanism like this, can produce from standing still, which uh, you, you lose out on because something like that accelerates air by more or less a fixed amount. So the faster you're going, the less available thrust you have to add. And you run into that problem really fast with ornithopters. And particularly in Stormworks, you run into it at like five meters per second. And most of the tinkering that I did had to do with getting past that barrier. And the biggest solution I found to it was pushing the control services as far out as I could get them. It turns out wingspan is really your friend with these things. All right, so something about this, I actually just enjoy watching it work without moving. It's it's pretty, like, I don't know. It's quite satisfying. Yeah. I enjoy it. <laughs> it's almost artistic. It's like a work of art. All right, so let's get it started and walk me through what's slowly happening. Well, I won't understand, but walk me through what's slowly happening anyways, as we start to, to go forward and turn and all that stuff. So the stroke will remain the same as we begin to throttle up. All that's happening is that the cyclic rate of the stroke is increasing. And because the static thrust is so high, I'm going to advance the throttle very slowly so it doesn't nose me all the way over. When you start off, you want to increase the throttle evenly. Uh, you you in, you very slowly increase the throttle, and you're going to be holding back on the elevator as you do it. Uh, point of interest, this is also common practice on a lot of tailwheel aircraft in real life. All right, so we're flying. Now, how are you doing the turns? So the turns in this are actually extremely simple. They're mixed directly into the ailerons uh, on, the, uh, on the wings. So the wings are constantly pitching up and down in order to produce thrust, but they're not actually using all of their travel to do that. They're using all of their down travel, but not, or they're using all of their up travel, but not all of their down travel, if you look very closely at the wingtip. So I'm literally just adding the roll factor directly onto them, like with an addition node. It's, not, it's nothing sophisticated. And up and down is just a tail, of course. Okay, now you said there is some kind of strange bug or something that happens? There is. Um, I will have to pull this into an into the editor to demonstrate the physics reversing, and I'm actually not sure it will work in multiplayer. I have no idea what it'll do. Okay, well, we can try it. If it doesn't, um, people can try it on their own. So I presently have the throttle capped at one quarter because if I go any faster than that, the wings will start to move out of phase with the tick rate altogether, and they will move so far out of phase that they will start creating thrust abruptly in reverse, which is rather interesting. Not 100% sure that will happen in multiplayer, but it does in single. All right, well, let's try it. I am going to be relatively cautious in the beginning again, see if I can get it off the ground long enough for this to happen. All right, there we go. Oh, we're going back down. <laughs> it's, it's thinking about it. Now I'm getting thrust. Okay. I'm having to kind of guess at my throttle settings now that it's uncapped. So now I'm probably at about half throttle. If I floor it, let's see what happens. Yep. It slams on the brakes and starts flying backwards. Explain again why that's happening. That happens because the wings move, the wings are moving up and down at a, at, a, at a cyclic rate. And eventually that rate becomes so fast that the physics engine measures them when they're moving in the wrong direction, much like in that uh, in that spinning rotor device that we looked at earlier, how it had to deploy its uh, it had to deploy its control surfaces on the upstroke, the ornithopter behaves more logically. But once it starts to hit that critical speed where it moves out of phase with the tick rate and it starts to reverse the tick rate, much like uh, if you 
watch if you watch motion reverse in a blinking light, then then the it's now measuring the control surfaces basically as if it was positioned or if it was at the opposite angle that it is. If that makes any sense. I, if I could diagram it, it would make more sense. The best analogy I can give you is the flashing light thing. Okay, that makes sense. That I get. Uh, is there anything you're working on that you want to show off here? Sure. Uh, I have a double jointed ornithopter for, uh, you know, really getting the flying like a bird thing going. All right, so we're at the Creative Island, and you're going to be bringing out. What are you bringing out? Oh, a double my... jointed ornithopter. Gosh. Okay, this is not on the workshop yet. This is not on the workshop yet. This I, I, I want to make it kind of nice before we get to that. This is interesting because it's not... Wait, it's jointed in the middle. That's interesting. Okay. Uh... Yeah, one of one thing that I've always wanted to do in my various ornithopter endeavors in various games is to build one that truly flies like a bird as opposed to like an insect. And that was never possible in Gary's mod. You just couldn't obtain the structural rigidity necessary to do it. But in Stormworks, that sort of rigidity is available. Amazing. This is amazing looking. It took a while to get flying, but eventually I did. And there is a little bit of trickery that will go on here. I'll show you the wing stroke first. Okay. This is more or less how it how it strokes the wing through the whole flight, but the amplitude will change. that's one full wing stroke you might notice that the control surfaces aren't moving much i changed up how i did the control surfaces in this on the first ornithopter the control surfaces run on trigonometry just like the wings do in this the wings run on trigonometry but the control surfaces just run on the delta velocity of the wings and i like that a little bit better it's a little bit more flexible because if one of the wings is lagging for some reason then it'll the control surfaces will act according to the wing as opposed to according to the math Look at that. It, it just, from every angle, this thing looks amazing. I'm looking at it from above. And it's got the bird, like the like the feathers are almost moving. It is crazy looking. Okay, now it's trying it's to fly. It's a little bit awkward to get airborne at the <laughs> it's moment, like a, but it will do it. What is that bird that kind of has trouble flying? Is it a dodo? <laughs> yeah, something like that. Oh, look at that. Look at those things open and close. Or move downwards, I guess. Wow. Yeah, so... Once it's airborne, you notice the wing stroke changes. It, the amplitude becomes a lot larger and the frequency becomes a lot lower. This ornithopter is about 10 knots faster than the uh, than the Dragonfly ornithopter. The pitch shake is a little bit worse. I didn't try a counterweight thing here because there's not really a way to do it. I'm just directly mixing the elevator against the, uh, the pitch inclination from the wing. All right, so what are we waiting for? How come we can't fly this on the workshop yet? Uh, well, there's no interior to speak of at the moment. If you look behind you, there's a bunch of uh, random weights that I threw around working while experimenting with counterweights. Uh, I have no idea how I'm going to do the entrance. And I have to do all of the avionics, which is a very time-consuming process. Okay. So do you have a cool name I, for this thing? I don't. Right now it's called Huge Ornithopter uh, Parentheses Generator Test, which refers to that jet engine in the back that I... I added to make sure that I could charge the batteries. Oh, is that what it's doing? Charging? <laughs> yeah. Okay. The other ornithopter is all battery power, but for this, I didn't want to waste the weight on batteries, so I threw a jet engine in it to charge a little medium battery. Okay, okay, so I noticed you have the wheels in the back. Is that the to make the tail float better, or what? Uh, the wheels are... That's just landing here. Oh, really? Okay. I thought you were doing the uh, wheel hack. Nah, ah, never no mind. Cheating on this. No cheating. Okay. My bad. If right. I was cheating, I wouldn't have bothered with this horrifying <laughs> wing structure. <laughs> all right, cool. All right, Balto, thanks for sharing all your builds. Uh, the links will be in the description to the ones that are available on the workshop. This one is not available, but when it is, I'll be sure to link to it. And uh, is there anything else you want to say? Uh, I don't think so. All right, well then, we will see you next time. See you later.